Station Houston for Apollo, we're ready for the event. Houston Station, ready. Italian Space Agency, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Italian Space Agency, this is uh, station. I read you loud and clear. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Good day. Here we are. Ciao, Paolo. Simona. Come va? Hi, Paolo. This is Simona. How are you? Are you working hard these days? Buongiorno, Simona. Buongiorno a te. Good day, Simona, to you and everyone else. And welcome on board the International Space Station. These days are uh, pretty packed because we've been starting to work with a full schedule. We gave us a bit of a slow rhythm in the beginning to get used to the environment. And now we're working really hard. And we also have some pretty complex activities that are uh, coming up, like the HTV, the Japanese vehicle. And there are many things that are going to be happening. And we're here with the President Sajese, and we can see you in the Columbus lab. Can you tell us what's going on there and what are you working on these days? This is one of the labs that's on board the International St Space Station. It's the Columbus European Lab. And it's actually been built in Italy, as other modules on station have been. There's also the American lab. And what we usually do in our, during our days is spending time in these labs to make sure all systems are functioning. And we spend our days to make sure that everything is working appropriately, to make sure everything is organized and prepared the, uh, for the upcoming activities. And we also conduct science and experiments for scientists on Earth that have entrusted us on how to utilize this environment to conduct experiments that we cannot conduct on Earth. Tomorrow the HTV is coming, and at the end of February, the Kepler mission, so how are the uh, preparations going for these two docking activities? Very well, these vehicles are very important. Without these vehicles, we cannot continue our work both on an experimental standpoint, but also to continue our work in general. So it's very important that these vehicles arrive and bring us things that we need. So the ATV and the HTV are very important. And Katie, my American colleague, will be responsible for grappling the uh, Japanese vehicle, which differently from the ATV, which docks on itself, for the HTV, the, the final part, the, the vehicle stops about 10 meters from the station and, and hovers, slightly moves, because it's basically flying in a synchronized manner 
And with the uh, mechanical arm, we're going to go get it and then bring it on board station, which is a complex operation. And we completed the uh, training at Houston, in Houston, and we're definitely ready. Ciao, Paolo Enrico. Hi, Paolo. Enrico. I wanted to let you know that aside from ASI, you're also connected to Altec. But, uh, and they cannot ask you questions, fortunately for you, but they can hear you. And uh, you probably know that you've been uh, selected for the Shorty Awards on the Internet for the uh, social media words. And you're probably going to go on the Internet to uh, try and get votes. Enrico, ti ringrazio per Enrico, thank you for this visit to the space station. I'd like to say hello to the uh, people at Altec in Turin that are continuing to support us. Regarding the Shorty Award, I didn't even know it existed, but I've seen on Twitter all these messages that started going. So. I, I don't know if I deserve it, and, and I don't even know how it works. So I let the people decide if it's something that makes sense, and I let them do what what they feel like doing. The first question we can think of is what are the changes that you've noticed from your first visit to the space station and now, and if you think it was better now or then. So last time I came was only three years ago, but the station has changed with the arrival of the uh, Note 2, which is the note we brought on board. We increased the volume, and we've also been able to add the Columbus module, the Japanese module, Node 3, and almost all these elements built in Italy, the cupola. So the station has truly become an excellent lab with, with all this instrumentation that scientists can make use of. But also for us, as astronauts, the station has become a place where we can work and live with more comforts. You know, without you know, 2 and 3, we sort of camped around with uh, sleeping bags, whereas now we have a place that we can call our little room, that we can go in there and we have our things. And lastly, we have the cupola, which is a beautiful spot for looking at the earth. And it's a place that usually I uh, take pictures that I put on the internet. And it's beautiful, and it's of course useful. For example, we use the cupola for the uh, docking of the uh, Japanese module. Steve McLean was telling me that the thing he envies the most is the cupola and the ability to see the Earth the way you describe it. Do you, do you take turns accessing the cupola or is it whoever wakes up in the morning first? Well, the cupola has been made in Italy, so when we make things, we build them well. It has many windows to comfortably accommodate three astronauts, so we're usually by ourselves or in couples. And I have to say that there is another window in the lab, but it's 40 centimeters in diameter. Whereas the cupola gives you very different 
much more complete view and it, it gives you an opportunity to enjoy this view. So it, it's a very important addition that has rendered the station much more habitable. Last question. There's a question from some journalists that maybe you get from some young persons too. Is it, how do you take a shower in the station? How do you eat? How do you sleep? Any comment on the difficulties of living there and how long it takes to get used to living in a microgravity environment. So, Rico, first I wanted to say real quick that it's not that we spend most of our time in the cupola. In fact, most of the time there's no one in there. One of the good things is one of the uh, one of the physical exercises that we do, that we have to do, which is the weight machine, it, it's right underneath the cupola. So whenever we're working out, you have the window in front of you where you can just look up. The microgravity environment is very interesting. It really makes you understand how it, there are things that we do on Earth that are difficult that here you can do without any effort. There are things that here are easy that are hard on Earth and vice versa. For example, taking a shower. Here it's practically impossible to take a shower because the water would go everywhere, so you can't. So the only way to wash yourself is to use some soapy water and use a towel. So this is one of the things that probably I miss the most, being able to feel water on your skin. Eating some fruit from the Italian cuisine that I miss rather than uh, prepackaged meals. But it is very important to be here for an extended amount of time. So, so we get used to it. Paolo, this is Simone again. Aside from the fact that we're also missing uh, Italian food in the Netherlands, but jokes aside, can you tell us how the experiment of the plants is going, this educational experiment that you're conducting? Yes. This is an educational experiment that was uh, thought up by the Italian Space Agency. And it's an interesting experiment that will begin once the ATV will bring us the uh, appropriate components. It's a simple experiment, so we'll, we'll grow some plants here in orbit. But the interesting things is that we'll give the various European classes a little kit so that they'll be able to do the same things that I'm doing here in orbit and then we'll exchange observations it's something simple but learning how to utilize something simple to make observations of scientific nature such as trying to measure parameters it's an important thing and it's it's an essential step that allows students to start thinking in a technical and scientific manner. And I'm very happy that the European Space Agency was able to put this experiment on board. And I'm looking forward to start it and be able to contact uh, all the students in schools. Just a second, I have a journalist that has a special question for you. Good day, I'm Parlangeli from the uh, Focus magazine. 
per farci vedere qualcosa di simile, qualcosa come un brindisi che per noi qui We'd like to toast with you, but we know it's it's impossible. So can you show us something similar such as toasting in space? Innanzitutto benvenuti a voi di Focus. First of all, welcome everyone from Focus magazine. It's, it's not every day that you get to come up here. And I'm convinced that in the future you'll be able to send up one of your journalists up here. Liquids here behave in a strange manner. We don't have glasses. We basically have everything in little bags with a uh, straw and a little valve that we use so that everything doesn't just come out. One of the, co the American colleagues has decided to design a special cup. These are applications that are studied. For example, in space vehicle tanks, we use a similar approach. So one thing that's hard doing on Earth that's easy to do on space and vice versa is drinking something. So to toast to you with for the 18th year of Focus magazine, so, so I will show you a toast where I'm going to let the liquid float and drink it without a cup, so don't try this at home. Best wishes to focus in its 18th years. Paolo, we're, we're almost done. Is there a message you want to send from the uh, space station? Is there something you want to say for the uh, success of this mission for the European manned space flight? First of all, I wanted to thank you and the European Space Agency for the efforts they've made to further this station and utilize it in the best way possible. I'd like to thank President Sagesa and the Italian Space Agency for the contribution to the European Space Agency to continue Space Station and its programs. These are complex, expensive, and difficult works, and our job is to find things to utilize the station for, and also make sure these things can happen in quickly. For example, our procedures currently are very complex, and it takes time to bring things in space, so we should find a way to bring things up more easily. So I ask you to continue to do that. It's a, and it's an important station to continue exploring, but also to give us a different point of view and new here in space, to continue to allow everyone to dream, because even with our dreams, we continue to grow. Thank you again to everyone. Bye from everyone here, too. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to your launch because of an ESA council. So hopefully they'll uh, organize something when you come back so we can come see you. Again, thank you for uh, being with us. Enrico, thank you. I'm sure when I come back I'll have a lot to do with rehab and debriefings, but uh, as soon as I'm done I'll come by the uh, Italian Space Agency in, in Rome to bring you firsthand the things that we've done and how we can continue this work in the future. Thank you.
Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Italian Space Agency. Yes, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Italian Space Agency. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.